Hey, Turner, how are you? Dude, I feel like a million dollars. You know, how are you doing? Pretty good. Um, so first of all, I want to know, like you have this bohemian peace and love vibe, but you're also one of the most cutthroat players we've ever seen in a long, long time. So <laughs> Turner, I ask you, which is the real Turner or is it both? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a Gemini. So honestly, <laughs> I think it is probably both, but I tried to play this game like with a counterbalance of my moral compass combined with what I think is the best for the game. And a lot of the times different pegs jumped to different parts of this totem. And it was very hard to navigate as any first round big brother player is. I tried my best. And I guess I've heard in other interviews that is the case. I've made a lot of unexpected decisions that were wild and cutthroat, but I don't know. I, I had fun doing it. If that means <laughs> to anyone. So I think it is, they're both me, but different aspects of me, yeah. business me, and then personal me. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you were, were you surprised at all that Monty didn't follow through and pick you to take you to the finals? Well, I was told by jury that if he did pick me, he would have done a lot better and it would not have been unanimous and he might have won anyway because of how bad my jury management is. <laughs> well, I mean, I was not surprised. I understand. I by no means hold anything against him. Uh, he's one of the coolest people I've met in my life. He's super wise, super cool guy, super level-headed yeah. in every situation. And so I have no complaints. I was shocked, but not mad. Now you mentioned when you were voting that, you know, you've cut, you came to your decision in the last few minutes between Taylor and Monty. What were you weighing uh, uh, in your mind when you, when you heard from them both? Well, I, I heard that the jury made up their decisions in every aspect of who is going to, for the most part, who like, they're going to vote for depending on if it's me and Monty or me and Taylor or Taylor and Monty or the, whoever it may be right. um, that like, just like when you go to cast your vote to evict, even with those speeches, usually your, your thoughts are like, your mind is made up at that point. Um, yeah. But for me, I wasn't at that round table. I didn't know all the aspects of everything they were told. Um, and even, even at that point, I was just like, I don't want to be on the wrong side of the vote. And I thought Monty was going to win and I love yeah. them both. So I guess I'm just going to do what I think will be, and they didn't tell me in the commercial break when I was like, what did you guys vote? And they're like, I don't know if we can tell you. So I was like, oh my God, I guess I'm just going <laughs> to pick who I think is going to win anyway. And I was totally wrong. But uh, Taylor had a very elegant speech that was very, um, just, I even wanted to vote. I like, I was like, I, I love the, both of these people. And she has a yeah. very good face, but usually the person wins with the most comp wins and Monty played a really good social game, but I, I see reasons for both winning and I'm not mad at all. Now, do you, do you think if Monty would have taken you that you would have won? I thought that myself, but I was also aware, like even in my speech, I was like, dude, I have the worst jury management of the past 10 years. Of business. <laughs> I have awful jury management. So if you take me, you're probably going to do pretty good. And when I asked the jury, what would have been the case if he took me? They're like, Monty probably would have won because of how bad your jury management is. And I was like, well, then he was, he had the real blunder. I can't be mad if he was just a second away and him telling the truth, just if he fell through, probably would have won anyway. So, you know, I can't be mad. I didn't win yeah. second place. That's only a $65,000 difference between the 10K and the 65, but he had a royal blunder with that difference yeah. that he missed. So whatever. Now, if you had made uh, the jury, how would you smooth things over for them? Did you have a plan of what you were going to say to them? Um, like had I been evicted previously and ended up there? No, if you were, if you were, if you made it to the jury, how were you going to smooth things over with them in your, in your like, uh, you know, pitch? Yeah, I, um, I think I would have just said I had to make the moves that I made and I yeah. tried my best to do like what I, like, I tried my best to weigh personal and game. And I think I got as far as I did because I made the decisions that I did. So yeah. any regrets at the end of the day, I think would have just sent me back had I played any differently, but simultaneously, like, it's very easy, I think, for probably what was aired for people to say, oh, I made a bad decision. But ultimately, like being in the house 24-7, first off, it weighs on you. And I, I had an amazing time. So I, I have no complaints as far as the house goes. Yeah. But like, I don't know what everyone's saying behind closed doors. So when I tried making the best game possible, maybe it didn't always come to fruition, but I can happily say I tried my best. Now, I want to give you a chance to respond to this because we spoke to Michael when he was evicted. And he basically said... Um, you know, uh, he that you brought identity into the game. It definitely felt like you were trying to use it as a manipulation tactic. And it felt to him that it was a little slimy and a little dirty. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? I mean, I, I mean, he did say something on the live show um, when, you know, he was on the block and we heard a bit of that. 
But mm-hmm. what do you say to his comments about that? I mean, I totally understand it, especially from his perspective. I really did not want to have to vote out the only other LGBTQ member in the house. And I told him that specifically, and that was ringing true as once I realized that was the case, I had tried to get him out earlier in the season. I realized that later in the season and I was like, damn, this is true. I don't know why I've been trying to backdoor this person who is the only other representative of this community as as I am. And so once the decision came time to make, I was like, at the end of the day, I'm trying to weigh personal moves and game moves. Yeah. And if there's this huge open door with the biggest competitor in the house, just like early on, I voted out Amira. At the end of the at the end of the day, I if I won the veto, I would not have used it. Even when Monty won the veto, I I, I heard this aired when he said I'm using the veto. I was like, dude, are you sure? Like I, I didn't <laughs> even expect it. So then for that to happen, I was like, if I don't take out Michael now, Michael. I don't think would be able, like if he didn't win an HOH yeah. whatever week, I'm not going to be insulated. People are going to be mad that I didn't take him out. So I just tried to weigh personal and game the best of my ability. And if I didn't take him out, I think people would be mad that I just wasted an opportunity to take out the winner. And if I did take him out, people would be mad that I did this. I probably just should have not vocalized my feelings about the not kicking him out, but yeah. that is how I felt at the end of the day. And it weighed on me heavily in, in the rest of the game. And I, I'm understanding that this was probably a point of contention for um, me online, but like I had no way to make a 100% pleasing decision to everybody. And yeah. I just made one. Well, absolutely. Now, one last question. Now, you know, you were able to separate the game from friendships in the house and you still had to cut many close allies and friends. Now, looking back, do you have any regrets of how you played or anything, how anything played out for you? It seems like a lot of people think I should regret voting out Alyssa, and I totally understand that, but at the end of the day, Alyssa didn't win any comps, and so putting, like, if I was not, if I was an outgoing HOH and couldn't compete in HOH, and I had to rely on Alyssa to win the NHOH, like, honestly, it wouldn't have happened, and so... I also had a final three with Taylor and Monty. So if I kicked out one third of my final three, Monty would be pissed. Monty ended up winning the next HOH anyway. And so he probably would have been mad enough at me to kick me out that week. And then going forward, he, when it was me and Brittany on that block, um, he could have evicted me anyway. And I think had I made that decision to blindside my alliance, then he probably would have, you know, kicked me out then. And he brought me very far. I brought him very far. And so he, he brought me to the point where he thought he couldn't use me no anymore. And I can't be mad at that because I did that with a lot of people. Yeah. So I'm very understanding. Well, it was great watching you. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. And I really appreciate it. And I think you played a brilliant game. You did what you had to do at the times and you made some very hard decisions. None of these decisions were easy for you. You obviously, you know, on the live feeds, people could see that you were really agonizing over some of these things and you tried to do the best you could. So I don't think there's anything to fault in that regard. I think you played a great game, and it was wonderful watching you uh, play this season. All the best to you in the future.